In this episode of Vinyl Hall, it's going to be almost split down the middle between heavy metal and death metal, but also a recent blackened speed metal release that's definitely caught my attention. So stick around for all of that. First up is the fourth studio album from Canadian heavy metal band Metallion. This is Beyond the Wall, released in 2022 by Temple of Mystery Records. So Metallion have returned with their own brand of fist-pumping heavy metal, which often gets put under the moniker of the new wave of traditional heavy metal. And there is some of that here, but they also have a bit of their own musical identity to keep things a bit more interesting. So we've got crunching guitars, a few acoustic passages, some strong and occasionally melodic vocals, and some solid driving tracks complete with some killer solos. Hearing some slight fast Eddie Clark influence in the solos, but also a pinch of early Maiden as well. Perhaps in some of the vocal harmonies, I catch some 70s rock vibes, maybe the Sweet or Queen, but it's not entirely conspicuous to be fair. Also in some of the more up-tempo tracks, such as Fire on the Road and Rise of the AI, you might catch some general Nawabum influences as well. I did want to stress the importance of the vocals here because Ian has a killer voice with a lot of range, and it's a real asset to this band throughout these tracks. I mean, I keep coming back to this when I hear this record, and perhaps you might as well. Also really dig the variety here, and I'm particularly noticing the slow track at the end of side one called Solar Winds. It has a soulful vibe to it, not unlike classic Thin Lizzy or maybe even early Whitesnake, but with occasionally soaring vocals that bring it into a more trad metal sound. As for the vinyl, it is Stormy Sky Blue. It is limited to 200 copies. Let's see the side there for you. Also, we do have some stuff in here. Have an insert, pictures of the band, as well as some lyrics. We also get a nice little sticker there with the band logo and get a super duper patch for my jacket, you know. Anyways, favorites on this one are Motor Horse, also Solar Winds and Cold Thunder. There's also a lyric video available for the track Behind the Lies. You can check that out at the Voyage to Hell YouTube channel. So overall, I'm really blown away by this record and it's clearly one of their best. If you're looking for some trad metal with some variety and strong songwriting, then check out Metallion's latest offering. Great stuff. Next is the second studio album from American death metal band Undeath. This is It's Time to Rise from the Grave, released in 2022 by Prosthetic Records. So right away, this album wastes no time with intros or lead-ins and just pummels right into the opening track, Fiend for Corpses. It's a good taste of what's to come with a variety of death metal styles and sounds. I'm getting shades of Cannibal Corpse, Bolt Thrower, and Carcass, but also some modern Finnish death metal along the lines of Hooded Menace, which means it can get doomy at times. They're usually at a mid-pace. Also, production is minimal here, though not exactly lo-fi. It's got that filthy, cavernous sound, likely what they're going for. Also, get ready for abrupt tempo shifts, and frequently, even within the same track. Which does remind me, there is some pretty great drumming here. You should definitely pay attention to that. As for vinyl variant, this one's called Blood and Bone, or Translucent Purple with White Splatter. Uh, no release numbers on this variant that I could find, unfortunately. In addition to that, we also have an insert with some artwork there, which you can also show this way as well. Doesn't really matter. Also, lyrics on the back and some credits there for you. As for favorites, definitely Rise from the Grave. Great track. Also, Necrobionics and the closing track, Trampled Headstones. Love what a record ends on a strong note, and this one definitely does. Also, bonus points with a song titled Bone Rot. No, not rot is an R-O-T, but is in Made Out of Bone. So yeah, bit of a pun there. I kind of dug it. Anyways, music video available for Rise from the Grave. You can watch that at the Prosthetic Records YouTube channel. 
So for some, it may seem like this record is all over the place, though perhaps controlled chaos might be a better description here. But tightness and brutality, not to mention variety, is always welcome on my turntable when it comes to death metal. Definitely digging this album, and perhaps you might as well. Next up is the debut studio album from international death metal band Hellfrost and Fire. This is Fire, Frost, and Hell, released in 2022 by Transcending Obscurity Records. So it's fair to state right out the gate that there is some bolt thrower worship here, which wouldn't be entirely unexpected given that one-time bolt thrower and current Benediction vocalist David Ingram is here, as well as some strong guest solos from Scott Fairfax of Memoriam, a band that's basically bolt thrower chapter two. So assume a strong smack of old school death metal of the British variety with pinches of the Dutch variant for good measure. Really digging the slow melodic guitar and spoken word intro to the Lost King and the Heir Apparent, it's satisfying in and of itself, but also it doesn't overstay its welcome, going straight into the track. Love that. Of course, since we've got Ingram in here, you'll also catch some nods to Celtic Frost here and there. He likes to do that on occasion, so it's fun when it happens on one of his project albums. I mean, the very album cover art here, and perhaps part of the band name itself, is clearly inspired to some degree by Celtic Frost, so some fairly big hints right there. Come to think of it, might Hellfrost be a combination of Hellhammer and Celtic Frost? Hmm. If I had one complaint here on this album, it's that the drums are too low in the mix, and they sound almost distant compared to the other instruments. I mean... They're there, and they're more than competent, but they could be higher and more strongly played as well. As for the vinyl variant, it is only referred to as variant number three, but this one is limited to 100 numbered copies. There's the other side there for you. Uh, my copy is number eight, as you can see right there. Um, I also got a couple stickers here. We have a... Hellfrost and Fire sticker, as well as some other ones. There's a Transcending Obscurity one, record label, and some other releases here. There's one for you from Thorn, and there's another one there as well. So, we also got a gatefold. I should show you that as well. Picture of the band, lyrics, and an ad for some company. As for favorites, they do include Black Secrets in the Splintering Walls, also Sonance of the Swords, great track, and Throne of Infinite Illusion. I'm also really digging the closing track, Within and Without the Emperor's Frontier, utterly crushing and doomy and with a killer solo to boot. Definitely check that one out when you got the chance. Uh, no music videos for this title, though you can check out the entire album at the Transcending Obscurity YouTube channel. So, a little repetition in the riff department at times, as well as a less than satisfying drum mix, but the brutality and drive are certainly there. It's a decent first album for this project band, and I'd be interested in hearing it evolve in future albums, if those happen. Overall, a very listenable old-school death metal homage here. Check it out. Next is a metal compilation album of what the record label calls Long Lost Gems from Ultra Rare 45s and Private Press Singles. This is Scrap Metal Volume 2, Excavated Heavy Metal from the Era of Excess, released in 2023 by Riding Easy Records. So, as you might remember, I talked about the first installment of this series sometime back on this show. But in case you missed that one, the Scrap Metal series are compilations of tracks from obscure metal bands from the late 70s to well into the 1980s. Material ranges from very raw and almost demo stuff to tracks with a lot more heart than talent but overall pretty enjoyable. So let's see if volume two measures up. Why not? Bands are split up between British and American acts, though the Nawabum influence throughout is pretty much front and center here. The record starts off fairly strong with Running for the Line by JJ's Powerhouse, great name. Uh, kind of a Fastway meets Diamond Head vibe on that one. Falling tracks run the gamut from 70s bluesy heavy rock to some flirtation with early punk throw in some early thrash influence, as well as some LA-inspired glam metal, also some Zeppelin worship, and again, lots of Nawabum. The final track, Wales, by the band Sorcery, is in equal parts heavy, melodic, and hilarious. I mean, 
it's literally about whales. At any rate, it's a fun album closer. Uh, sound quality also varies from track to track, but that's expected given the nature of the material. But nothing is ever too bad to be distracting. So, there you go. Vinyl variant on this one is blue. It is limited to 500 copies. That's the other side with writing easy logo there for you. Uh, pretty bare bones release. Um, you do get some liner notes on the back here. Uh, talks about every track. But that's about it. Favorites on this one. I definitely want to talk about JJ's Powerhouse again. Such a great band. Love to hear more from them. Also, Storm Queen. Uh, Prowler is pretty cool, as well as Black Rose. You should check out those four tracks. I would say that despite the jokiness of the packaging here, there's some real indie metal gems on this one. Uh, not too dissimilar from the early Metal Massacre comps. In fact, I might need to see if a few of these bands had any full-length releases. As for the comp, this one exceeds its already enjoyable predecessor, and I'm fairly excited to see this series continue. Next up is an expanded reissue of the 10th studio album from American hard rock band KISS. This is the Creatures of the Night 40th Anniversary 3 LP edition, released in 2022 by Universal Music Group. So while KISS is by and large not a metal band, I do feel this album in particular is as close as the band gets to the genre. So guess what? We're going to talk about it. As many know, this is the final album of the initial makeup era of the band, though Ace on the cover doesn't mean Ace is on the album. In fact, he isn't. Vinnie Vincent is on six of the nine tracks, with Robin Ford, Steve Ferris, and Adam Mitchell taking over the rest of the non-Paul guitar work. This album is also, in part, a return to form for the band. Uh, after two pop albums and a concept record, not to mention that heavy metal had made a bit of a comeback at this point, Kiss decided to put out a heavier and darker album in response. And they more or less continued this heavy path throughout the 1980s, though with a more pop metal sheen later in the decade. In 1982, when this album was new, Paul Stanley even referred to it as heavy metal. Though I would say it's probably heavy metal filtered through the Kiss sound. Yeah, why not? Uh, the remastering of the studio record is worth mentioning here, too. It sounds fantastic. I've always loved both the bass sound and especially the drum sound on this record. I think a lot of people do. And the remaster definitely retains those elements pretty well. Also, this is not the 1985 remix, which I'd rather never hear again. As for the demos and rarities on record two, I can say right away that they've been cleaned up quite a bit from the bootlegs that I've heard over the decades. Um, pretty much so. A uh, Deadly Weapon is an early version of Love's A Deadly Weapon, but with different lyrics and Paul on vocals, which is fun to hear. Also, a couple of early versions of two tracks from Killers, uh, the Simmons demo version of It's My Life, and an early version of Not For The Innocent, also with differing lyrics, but with Paul and Gene splitting lead vocals, plus a few other tracks. Uh, the only track I've never, ever heard, really, is Don't Leave Me Lonely, which is fine, but not really amazing. Uh, the third record is comprised of live tracks. They're taken from the album's tour and specifically from three shows, Rockford, Illinois, Houston, Texas, and Sioux City, Iowa. Get seven songs in total, six of which are from Creatures with I Want You in there as well. Killer version of I Want You, I can see why they put it in. The sound recording is clear, but basically of decent bootleg quality. It is listenable though, and the track selection is pretty solid, so it's definitely worth the spin. Uh, vinyl variant on this one is blue. I'll show you each of the records here. Uh, record one is the studio album. There you go. Record two is the outtakes, demos, and rarities. You can see they repeated the reel-to-reel uh, -reel graphic that they did from the Destroyer set. Same thing here. And the live album is here with much the same on the reverse. As for favorites uh, on the studio album, uh, they're kind of the same as they've been for the last however many years, decades, whatever. Uh, Creatures of the Night, Love that song a lot. Of course, I love it loud. And War Machine, great song. Favorites on the rarities include Deadly Weapon, also It's My Life, despite Wendy O's version being quite a bit better. And also Not For The Innocent. That's a track that may later made its way onto Lick It Up. This is an early version. It's pretty cool. I dig it. Uh, favorites from the live set are Keep Me Coming, War Machine, and Rock and Roll Hell. Especially dig that Keep Me Coming and Rock and Roll Hell are here because you don't hear those songs live very often. Pretty cool. 
Um, we should also check out the contents of this package here. Uh, first and foremost, the eyes on the cover are glow in the dark, something that this record jacket should have done 40 years ago because that would have been too cool. Um, also, we have some other things in this package. Uh, we do have a full booklet. Um, it does explain uh, a lot of things about the making of the record, also where the band was at the time. I'll just show you a little bit of it here. There's some cool pictures. They go through the whole story. There we go. On and on and on. I'm not going to show you everything. We'll just flip through it here to the end. Cool picture of the band. Also, Eric Carr, rest in peace, as well as Michael James Jackson, their producer. He had died last year. Uh, we also have some inner sleeves here. This is for the studio album. It's uh, credits and lyrics and all that. This looks pretty much like the original one there for you. Uh, record 2 has some of the demo labels here for you, as well as a cool picture of the band. And 3, record 3 that is, is the live album. It's got the title there, some cool live shots, as well as pictures of the band yet again. So, uh, music video available, as it has been for the last 40 plus years for the track, I Love It Loud. You can check that out at the KISS YouTube channel. So, it's no secret that this, on this channel that this is my favorite KISS album, and for a lot of the reasons I've probably mentioned more than a few times, both it and Lick It Up were my first two KISS albums. I bought them both in 1983, and they definitely laid the groundwork for a live love of heavy music in general. And along with the two records of bonus material, this was well worth buying. And of course, it's cheaper than the $300 Creatures box set, so there's that as well. So yeah, glad I grabbed this one, especially for those two really awesome bonus records. They really are the draw here. Next is the ninth studio album from American death grind band Exhumed. This is To The Dead, released in 2022 by Relapse Records. So, it might be more accurate to put these guys into the camp of gore grind, as there are plenty of nods to both early Carcass and even classic era Napalm Death here, but also some elements of thrash. Certainly an overall oppressive and filthy guitar tone. Not quite buzzsaw, but in calmer moments, it does have a bit of the Swedish in it. Lots of jumps between blistering speed and pummeling sludge, even within a given track, and some cool and occasional melodic soloing over top the blasty chaos. Though, this isn't Mellow Death by any stretch, just in case that was a concern of yours. Vinyl variant on this one is called Pool of Blood. It's also known as Bloody Red Cloudy Effect. Take your pick. Um, according to the hype sticker, it's limited to 400 copies, though the website states that the run is at 432 copies. So, again, take your pick. I also have an insert here with full lyrics. A disgusting beverage below. Also more lyrics. Credits. Picture of the band. As for favorites on this one, Drained of Color. Great song. Love that track. Also Ranked and Defiled, as well as Necrotica and Disgusted. There is a music video for Drained of Color, as well as a lyric video for Carbonized. You can find both of those at the Relapse Records YouTube channel. Also, if you're wanting to check out a documentary on the making of this particular album, there's also one of those. This time you'll find that at the official Exhumed YouTube channel. So, a brutal, grindy, and tight little number, even more so than the last two records. Something others might be calling a slight return to form. And although my history with this band is admittedly a bit limited, I am digging much of what I'm hearing, notably in the change-ups and the heavy, catchy riffs. It's a bit old school, but it also has a freshness to it that keeps it from being predictable or a simple copycat band. Lots of headbanging to be had as well. Anywho, check it out. Next up is the third studio album from Scottish blackened speed metal band Hellripper. This is Warlocks Grim and Withered Hags, released in 2023 by Peaceville Records. So, straight out the gate, we are thrown into a speed metal assault with blackened vocals, typical for Hellripper. On the lead track, the Nuckalavi, or the Naklavi, take your pick. Digging the melodic thrash solos throughout as well. In fact, there is a lot of growth here from previous records, which I will get into in a minute. But it's also not at the expense of what made Hellripper such a good band. Or one-man project with a few guests. Take your pick. 
What's immediately separating this from past efforts is definitely an increase in catchy riffs, melodies, and complementary time shifts in the tracks. Gone seemed to be some of the predictability, notably that repetition from previous efforts, and it's been replaced with, dare I say, a smidge of musical maturity. I mean, even the longer tracks have enough progression and variety to keep them interesting. The title track seems like the best example of that, too. Uh, we're also getting an almost epic feel at times, both in track lead-ins, but also in some of the general riffs. Truthfully, I'm glad a lot of this is happening. I mean, I've been wanting Hellripper to further differentiate itself from other blackened speed metal bands out there for a while now. I think Midnight was the former comparison. They definitely come to mind. Of course, there are still a few speedier tracks in the vein of older Hellripper to keep the early fans pleased, such as Goat Vomit Nightmare, The Cursed Carrion Crown, and The Hissing Marshes. But these two have some of this album's variety in them. And you know what? I couldn't be happier about that. Oh, and did I mention bagpipes? Because they're here too, on the title track. But you know what? It kind of makes sense on that song, so why not? A vinyl variant on this one is Gold. There you are. And there you are. We also have an inner sleeve, full lyrics. More lyrics, picture of Mr. McBain himself. You also get an insert for Peaceville Records and their catalog. Got the latest autopsy there, newest Dark Throne. I really want that Paradise Lost live, live album down there. I will buy it one day. Also, many more titles in case you really love text. There you go. As for favorites, definitely the Knuckle of E, the Clavi. Nakalevi, Levy, I don't know. Warlock's Grim and Withered Hags as well. Great song, really love that one quite a bit. As well as Poison Womb, The Curse of the Witch. Also, if you're wanting to hear some of this album, the title track as well as the Naklavi are available at the Peaceville Records YouTube channel. So, I'm gonna say it, this is easily Hellripper's best album to date. I did actually stray from this band over the last year or two due to some of the sameness of previous albums especially the last one, but it looks like I'm back because this is far from your typical Hellripper album. Still heavy, still blackened, but also catchier with more thought out melodies and structure, pretty much start to finish. So given that I'm already loving this record, I'm excited to see what James McBain does with his band in the future. Great stuff here. So definitely let me know in the comments which of these albums and bands you like or even dislike, I'll take that too. Also, music suggestions are always appreciated. If I mention a band or an album or a genre that you dig and you're thinking to yourself, hey, I know something you dig even better than that, you should mention that too, of course, in the comments below. And if you don't know who I am or what my channel is about, let's fix that now. My name is Matt. This is the Accusation Network, where each and every week I do videos on metal vinyl collecting, I also do videos on modern and classic metal in general. If that sounds like something you dig, definitely give this video a like. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And share my videos with some of your friends. Other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.